hey guys we'll just hang out for a second why don't you uh so why don't we grab some really cool dies vincent so you can show them how some show them some master hubs and then what we'll do is i'll explain how they're made and then how they can make one at home okay using basic tools as soon as anyone gets on there yeah still there's one person cool okay let's see don't make them too busy or dizzy yeah uh which ones are you thinking oh just stuff with lots of detail and flowery design i'm gonna get a snack you want me to go find actual hubs because these are all the dies you can show them around some stuff till we get people online okay Hello, John. We're going to be doing uh, some. Going to show some people how die, how some dies are made. So we'll be doing more than just stamping. We're working on a, a basic little ring die here. I want to try and find, uh, yeah, here's some actual raised hubs. Who's this artist? They can catch up. <laughs> or they can rewatch it when we're finished. Mm-hmm. All right. I love the Smarties. These things are great. <laughs> so, <clears throat> several ways to make a die. And... I'm going to show you how to make one, you know, simple stuff that you can make right at your bench with just hand tools. You don't need giant presses or milling machines. When they made a lot of these tools initially, they didn't have those kind of machines. And they pretty much just sat down at a bench with chasing tools, hammers, files, and chisels. And they didn't make hubs. I see everyone trying to buy, you know, it's funny. If you go to an auction of jewelry equipment back east, people will pay real money for dies. The hubs, the male die, the, the one that everyone seems to be chasing all over the place. Where's a hub? So this is a hub. Let me, let me grab something useful. It's a ring. So let's feed that couple of ring hubs. Let's go sit down. If you are out hunting down stuff on the internet, trying to buy old stuff, hubs are the last thing you would want to buy. Because in order to use this, you need an entire machine shop. That is honestly why they're all over the place, because they're the least desirable item. What everybody wants and what you see people pay big, big money for at auctions are the female dies. What they want is a complete tool. They want the trim tools, the blanking tools, and the impression die. And then you, you don't ever need this again. This is never needed again. But these end up just sitting in drawers. And the only reason we're using them is because buying dies was incredibly expensive and they're hard to come by where these were readily available and inexpensive so we would do this but most people don't have the ability to actually use these because i see people spending a fortune on them and then they send them to me and it's kind of crazy because then you know and we're really cheap for sinking stuff like this but anyway i'm going to show you how to make your own die and when they make a tool like this, a lot of times, the early stuff, it was done by hand, just like what you're about to see. And it isn't, it's not difficult. It doesn't require any a major amount of skill. Um, I mean, obviously, if you want to carve snakes and birds, that's, that's a little more complex. But we're going to make a bale here. So this is a bale. And imagine, how, imagine it laid out flat, and then you fold it in half, and that's how you get your bale. So what we're going to do is we're going to chase a border around the edge. 
of this and then we'll put a little spot here where we'll set a stone so what I do is we're going to actually hammer this in you could use a ball burr so we'll try a few different methods as we go around this tool to make this but all I have here is just a piece of steel nothing fancy you can literally use an old burr just grind it to shape and I'll show you how to do that so but let's start with a little bit of chasing first so uh, this is how you do it grab a hammer have something nice and sturdy you don't need any special fancy engraving balls you, you could do this on your stump if you had a stump or even if you just had a 4x4 four four, a big block of wood that would work and all I'm gonna do I've, I've shaped this tool using my disc sander and a rubber wheel it's already hardened steel so here we go and you want to make it very small because that way you don't need a giant hammer. So you're just going to, I basically have drawn on here and I'm going to go along here with my hammer and just hammer it in. And you don't take giant steps forward. You always leave just you go about halfway with the part. Because if you take a giant step forward, you'll lose, you'll get out of the groove. Can you see it okay? Oh yeah, I'm getting in there. Use a pretty heavy hammer too. That helps. So if you wanted to just do a big piece full of texture, you could do that too. But you could literally, this is the same skills as, it's basically it's as repousse. It's called chasing. If you want to make something deeper, what you can do is get in there with a burr or a graver and start removing metal. Right now, we're just hammering metal down. And this is really an easy thing to do. This is very easy for people to do. You can get more advanced as you practice. But when you want to make a die, you're essentially just working in reverse. Which sounds difficult, but it's not nearly as difficult as making a hub. Because to make a hub, you're going to have to make a die anyway, because you'll be working back and forth between the two. To make a die, we're just going right in. Right in here. Let's take a look. You can see I'm getting it lined out. Just kind of getting a line. And then I'll, what I'm going to do is I'll go in there. Let's go after it with a ball burr to get it a little deeper and kind of just remove the metal. Let's go do that. Anybody watching yet? 43 people. Oh, wow. So there's a few ways of doing it. We can remove metal with a graver. And so I'm going to do that first. And I'm not going to put it in any sort of vise, so it'll be a little awkward, because I know most of you are not going to have an engraving ball. And you don't need all, I mean, it would be nice to have a diamond hone and a lap and all this stuff to make your gravers perfect. But I've never used any of that stuff. I just use my sanding disc. So. I'm going to start calling you Scooter. <laughs> yeah, I just roll around in this chair. So here we've got our We've sharpened our graver and then you can kind of that'll deburr it You can see where I was just jam my gravers into my bench to kind of takes the burrs off of them So you can just get in here and Don't try to take giant cuts. You don't this you're doing this by hand. You don't have a power graver So you're gonna take lots of little cuts And remember, you're going to have this thing forever, so you don't need to rush it. It's not a, it's not a speed contest. 
just take little cuts it, the temptation is to just try to dig in really deep watch this let's go after it with the power graver and this is this is what's really revolutionized the uh once again we will go after this with a uh Sanding disc. There, I know that there's hand engravers out there that are literally, they're, they're just turning right now, just going, oh my god, he is a savage. Because, in all honesty, guys, this is just a busted off burr. Because I'm too cheap to buy regular graving tools, because I literally use my graver like a shovel. I mean, I, I don't even... I pretty much use it like a shovel. I all I want to do is use it to remove material. So here we go. And this is um, a lot of engravers hate these things. This is the Fordham Power Graver. I've got a Graver Max, and I guess I could get anything I wanted, but I really like this because it's really quick and easy. It is just bonehead simple. So watch this. Here we go. Check that out. Pretty sweet, huh? Just hog it out. And I mean, I did not, I didn't spend 50 bucks on a special carbide steel graver. I sharpened it with a, with a disc sander. I didn't have a diamond lap. Um, you can get really bogged down in all the details. Can you see it just peeling up the... Notice we're just peeling up a chunk. I don't, I'm just holding it with my bare hands. I, I actually do have an engraving ball, but I really just prefer to hold it. <laughs> Somebody just asked if it's a hammerhead. Oh, this thing? <laughs> yeah. No, it's similar. It's a bale. Oh yeah, this is a bale. Now I think what they're asking is if I'm using a hammer hand piece. No, I, I think she's asking. Mm. Because the piece you're making, the way it's laid out, kind of looks. Oh like yeah, so suppose, this will be folded in half, yeah, it's and it's going to make a really awesome bail. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. So what you do, but you don't have to make a hub. We do not need to make a male hub, and then press it into here. We don't need to do that. We can carve our design directly. So imagine if you wanted to make a ring, and this is no special steel. This is just 1018 mild steel. It's plenty for what we're doing. So imagine if you wanted to make a pair of earrings. You could literally draw out your design and then just come in here with a graver or a, uh, a hammer and a chisel and punch it out. So... We'll go a little bit deeper here. I mean, the graver really is a great way to do it. If you if you can afford one of these, they're not. This is the cheapest system going. I think this is uh, it's under five hundred dollars for this machine, and um, it's got a little controller here, a little speed control. But if you can't afford that, just use a regular graver. These are cheap. These are like ten bucks, and you could just go at it, and you just push it. Just use a push graver. And if this causes you problems, you can actually use a hammer and chisel. And that is really, this is how um, Ron and Ron Landis and Steve Adams, Steve Adams made these. These are pretty sweet. So what you would do, you hold them like this and you just tap, 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 tap and use a hammer and cut it deep. And this is, these are great. I use these things a lot. And then here's, let me show you some of these other, these are called die sinker files or riffler files. 
So, let's say you're trying to uh, get into a little area. Check this out. You can go right in and just, you just start filing. So, depending on what you're trying to do, there's literally a file for everything. But you can just start working them out. And you can get a nice straight line and get a nice pattern going. And these are, you know, you can find them on eBay and stuff. There's a ton of different shapes. So, like, if you're trying to file the flat bottom of an area, you get in there and just file it to flatten out the background. I use these a lot. There seems to be one for everything. But I have my favorites. Usually my favorite one keeps getting broke. I keep working it pretty hard. But so let's let's just knock out the border on this thing really quick. And then I'm gonna just press it in silver and show you what we get. So you can see that this is very easy. You don't even need to use round bar. If you can find a piece of flat bar, great. I'm not trying to even sell you steel. But we actually, if you want some of this, I guess we could put some up. What are the curved files called? Uh, Riffler files or die sinker files. But what this is for, this is, we're making a cool bale for our, our little deal here that we made yesterday. So here we go. Let's just carve this out. You can go online and YouTube and stuff, and there's engravers who are, like, amazing. I, I'm not. I kind of treat these things like... I, I carve. I don't really engrave. You gotta just let the machine do the work. Very neat. So, what you can do when you want to see how deep you've gone, I usually have a lump of putty around here. This is actually Play Doh. So, if you want to see what your image is looking like, just press it down. And then you'll see the line. So, that's what it's going to look like in the silver. So, we'll have this nice little border. Pretty cool, huh? And it would be difficult, you'd, you know, you'd have to solder a wire on there or something if you were trying to do that without making a die. So let's cut the other side up. You'll probably enjoy this. It's pretty fun. If you get into engraving, you're gonna have there's a whole bunch of people who will tell you all sorts of things. That you need to buy a GRS system, you need to buy you know, all these really expensive graver systems, but when you're just learning, <laughs> I, it doesn't really, honestly, I don't think it matters. Plowing it in. And if you, if, if you, let me show you something. The higher up the angle, the deeper the cutter digs in, the lower the angle. Like if I come across like this, you get a shallower cut. If you go real high, you're going to dig in deep and you'll start, you can hear the machine starting to struggle. But you can, that's why it's better to take a couple cuts. Okay, now we're really flying. Lovely. Pretty neat. And uh, so then you can also go back in there with your chasing tool. I mean, th this is truly one of my favorite ways of doing it. But what you can do, like let's say you want to put a flower or carve a flower or something, 
that's when your chasing tools are really going to come in handy more so than this this cuts lines a chasing tool is going to kind of that can give you your contours and your curves and um, where that's this can't this is I use this for cutting lines let me show you another thing that don't be afraid to break out your your Fordham and just go barbarian on it I mean I'll grab I I grab whatever's handy I've been known to use angle grinders on my guys to get things going so just grab grab whatever and start carving so here we go I want this to be really deep I'm a close-up of that. This goes really quick. This is easy too. You don't, there's no rules. Don't worry about. Are the blank pucks on the website the si same size as this one? Uh, they're a little smaller, but we can put these sizes up. I just grabbed this one because it fits the size I wanted to make. I like giant bales. And honestly, this isn't any special steel. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't need to buy steel you, from us. You can just get, you can any, get this uh, anywhere. And it doesn't need to be round either. This is just round because this is what we... It's set up for our machines. But I, I will sell steel if you guys need it. So, I mean, you can see, and this is this is something you guys already have. You How guys, deep is deep? I don't know. Um... I'm going to make, here, let's, let me carve it out a little bit, and then what we'll do, we'll use the putty, and see what it looks like. Now, when you're cutting steel with a burr, you do not want to go super fast. You will burn your cutter up. So let's grab the putty, we'll press into it. That's Can pretty... you use the back of another die? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen four-sided dies come out of Germany. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was that was a bit excessive, but yeah, it's possible. Yeah, so you can see, and this I I pretty much I just go barbarian style on dies mostly. I do this, I just break out these cutters. If I buy a steel block online, what's the minimum depth I should get? Inch, one inch. They don't need to be super thick or anything. Because you're not going to heat treat it or anything. You're just going to use it. That's all you're going to do. A die like this, you could probably press it a thousand times without ever wearing out your design. But let's say you actually sell a thousand of something you come see me we can get rich together if you got <laughs> something that someone wants a thousand of i'm all in to help you <laughs> i've never sold a thousand of anything at least not jewelry designs that's for sure so thank you can 1018 mild steel be used in the press yes that's all we use in our presses. We don't use any, we don't sell dyes made of tool steel. Because unless it is perfectly heat treated and tempered, it can break. And unless you've got guards on your press, like, I mean, there's no, you don't, there's no reason to be using tool steel in a 20 ton press. There is none. Tool steel is really for, for high production. And I don't, if you're buying stuff from me, you probably aren't doing high production. Can you use a, a, a hammer with a die? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
As you can it's see. difficult depending on what the die it, is. It is. It, it's, it's possible. It is possible. It, it's not easy. If you hate your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> if you hate your silver, yeah. <laughs> oh, if you hate your shoulder, yes. Yeah. So, you can see I've got only a few minutes in this thing so far, and it looks pretty good. So we're going to, once you get a nice little groove going, get it nice and evened out. Alright, so now I'm going to take and press my putty into there. And this will tell you what kind of depth you've got. So then you would fold it like this, and there's your bale. So next thing we're going to do is I want to put a place for a stone. Oops, sorry. No worries. So let me get my flex shaft here. I'm, I think a, I don't know, let's see what we got here. Let's see if we got anything cool. This is where you launch little stones all over the place. You gotta be really careful. Oh, sparkly, shiny. I think every jeweler I've ever met has a little tin like this filled with, it's either an Altoids tin or it's one from these guys, Best Last. So then you grab your tweezers and this is where you fumble around looking for something. So like, let's say I wanted to make a set a square sapphire in this boom there it is i would cut a square bezel right into it that's a little challenging for today i don't feel like doing that so what we're going to do is we're going to find something are you thinking of carving this uh the to set it um i'll probably you know, okay here's something cool we're going to set this little, it's, it's a uh, frozen spit diamond. <laughs> it's aquarium grade. So that's what we're going to do. I'm aquarium gonna, grade. Aquarium grade. So it's like gravel, but sparkles a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole with a ball burr right there. We're going to put a, take a ball burr and that is going to make us a positive image. That'll put a, then we make a negative hole. And then that will fill in with silver. Because remember, we're working in the negative. So you don't need to carve all this outside stuff away. I mean, we're literally making our thing right now. If you wanted to make a ring, you could just plop a stone right there in the middle. And call it Dunyan Rings. So here, let's go. Christ, your hands keep getting in the way and the Sorry. camera is not happy. <laughs> oh, alright. So let's... So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to set my little... Frozen spit diamond down, and then I'm going to grab a ball burr. And I'm going to look to see how big we got to get bigger because I want to have enough room to uh, set this thing. Wow, that is a messed up ball burr. I don't think that thing will cut anything. All right, we got to find a decent ball burr. My burrs are really massacred because I cut tool steel with them. I, we, we literally, I buy burrs by the bucket full. We destroy them. Let me, let's get some fresh ones. You can buy really good burrs, but if you're carving steel, it's, I don't think it matters. So check these out. These are kind of cool. These are diamond burrs. These are like super cheap and crappy. But I'll bet we can get one hole out of this with one. I try all kinds of stuff. Actually, these aren't even going to fit my flex shaft. Brilliant. Okay. What do we got here? Cross burrs. Oh, we're, we're running on hard times now. All right, let's find something. Uh, what I'm going to have to do... Oh, here's one. This one's not massacred. 
What brand do you use to cut steel? Uh, I use Bush burrs. They're the cheapest burrs. They're right there with, oh, here's a good one. Here they are. They come in little packs like this. Nothing fancy. They, I buy them in a five pack. Oh, and I also buy Panther. They, they're all made in Germany. I found these ones from Stuller. They're a big jewelry tools distributor. They, they sell mountings and findings. But they had they had a sale on these ones called Panther. And they were like like a buck a piece. Like something like this would be like a dollar fifty. So that's pretty awesome. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going right after this thing. I'll set my little diamond up there. I'm eyeballing it. We're not gonna agonize. I'm gonna put my so you want to make sure so I'm a little off it definitely does not hurt things to use some of this stuff I gotta go a little slower and you just kind of And you turn it so that you can make a nice hole. Otherwise, you'll get kind of an oval gouge. Hit it with a little more burr lube. a dot that's kind of neat if we wanted to put like little decorative dots we could do little decorative dots all the way down there's so much you could do but what we're going to do is i'm going to show you how to bottom that hole so we're going to make the bottom of this hole flat that way it looks more like a bezel and there's a couple ways you could do it so i could go in there with what's called a a little uh, cone burr and I can do that so we'll try that first if that doesn't work out well what I'll probably end up doing is I'll make a punch I'll take a piece of round bar stock and I'll literally hammer that bottom flat that way you know so you, don't, you always got to remember you can go you can hammer metal in and you can remove metal this is cool because it's already tapered you definitely would not want to use an inverted cone let me show you what an inverted cone is in case you've never seen one. Here's one. It's going the opposite direction. So if you were to use this, you could actually create an inversion in there and then your metal get locked in. So you always want to use... I, I got no good image of that. Oh, here. Inverted cone. Here we are. Okay. Yeah. The camera's being finicky today. Really? Alright, here we go. Check it out. It's looking all right. And if ever you want to check your progress, just break out the putty. There we go. So you can see I haven't even had to stand up from my bench yet. We've done this all at a bench. And we've done it all with just regular hand tools. There's that. So imagine if you had to fabricate this whole thing. And especially if you're making a line of jewelry. I mean, everybody makes pendants. So if you had to make the same pendant, the same bale a bunch of times, imagine if you used a pancake die to cut your shape out, lay your blank right on it, and then press it. And you suddenly have your bezel and your cool little border designs. And 
you know what I might do? I might even go in here with some of my half-ass engraving. <laughs> so, just going to go in here. Let me, let me take and draw something that I think might be pretty. Let's see. Let's do... Let's do little squigglies. So that's what I'm going to do. Just some random squiggly lines on the one side. Let's see if it works. Don't know if it will. I might just be making a mess. <laughs> but it's okay. Don't be afraid of screwing up. You're like the, uh, the, Bob, the, the Bob Ross of the jewelry. Bob Ross, yes. So I don't think just... you're that level-headed, though. No. <laughs> no. All right. I got so many foot pedals under here. Here we go. Do you ever use oil to keep the burr lubricated? I use wax. But if you want to use oil, you totally can. I like to use um, oil of wintergreen. It smells pretty. Neat. Got a wavy line. That turned out pretty good. Yeah, and you can see I'm not agonizing over this. We're just playing around. Okay, so now we got that. You know what I think would look really cool? Is if we textured the background a little bit. So, I'm, I'm gonna just go after it with this and stipple it. Maddie, I'm just gonna massacre my point because I don't care, because I can grind it again with my, uh, <laughs> my flex shaft. Cool, huh? Glad I didn't get this side now. We're gonna go press this thing in a second. I hope some of you guys give this a try. It's, you know, this kind of stuff is really handy. And you can make a whole ring like this, like a cigar band ring. You don't need to go crazy making something super deep and elaborate. I mean, this is pretty basic. Let's press it and see what, we look, what it looks like. Get a close-up of that. It's pretty cool. And if you want to do enamel now, you could enamel that. You'd have these little cells. That's pretty cool with the texture in the background. So let's go press it. Let me get a piece of silver. There we go. So silver. It's already soft, so we're going with it. And... Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not even going to trim it first. I'm just going to press it to get an outline, and then I'm going to come in and trim it, okay? Use 
our press? Or do we use something? We got that working again. You know, it's pretty funny. So I always make fun of engineers because they're so meticulous. They, they, they measure stuff and they think about things. And one of my good friends, Mitch, she's an engineer. So I, I taunt him endlessly about it. Um, he actually fixed it. I was ready to do what's called the electrical ectomy, where I gut it. I pull all the parts off of it that prevent it from functioning. <laughs> and then I just put just simple switches and valves on it. And um, Mitch actually went in there. And look, look at this. It's freaking crazy in here. This is, this is where you just lose your mind. All those switches. So he went in there and he diagnosed the problem and he ordered the parts. He actually was able to find the parts because, you know, he's an, he's an electrical engineer. And um, I'm very grateful that he works for us <laughs> because this machine should be thanking, thanking Mitch because it's already broken on me three times. And every time I, a friend of mine who's an engineer has stepped in to save it. But I was like ready. This thing was getting the axe. But he fixed it. So let's... Uh, I'm afraid to use it. <laughs> <laughs> let's use mine. Let's use this big beast. This is pretty fun. Uh, I need spacers. Spacers over there. Let's spacers in there. Oh, here are some. Alright. I'm going to just use a piece of urethane on this just so that we can make it happen. And I'm not going to go very hard on this thing, because otherwise we would push completely through. But here we go. Let's take all this off the top of the motor. Pretty cool. So let's go in the other room and look at what we did. We'll look at it closely. If, if we were using this, I would have had to have trimmed it and stuff, but I didn't think you guys wanted to watch me trim a piece, so we just plowed it. Oh, did you grab the puck? Oh, good. I'm always one step ahead of you. <laughs> Yeah, that looks really cool. So what I'm going to do here, get a really good close-up. You guys see it? And those are just hand engraved lines. And you saw we didn't really spend a lot of time agonizing. This is the height we got. So let's, let me uh, turn this thing out. The reason we use this thin of a piece of metal is because it was laying here. It just was lucky. <laughs> I had a piece of silver ready. So this is probably, eh, it's pretty thin. 20, maybe 22 gauge probably. All right. So then what I'm going to do is we're going to bend it into a bale. I'm actually kind of curious to see how this is done. Oh, really? Oh, well, yeah. The excitement. You know what? That's so barbarian. I'm setting bad examples for people. Mm -hmm. Let's let's saw it. This is pretty funny. Yeah, you come to my channel to watch how things... Oh, I know that everyone tries to do their best practices whenever they're filming or something. And then you come over here and I'm like, just sort of winging it. A couple of people seem to want to buy this design from you. <laughs> no, no. You get to make it. It's very simple. Yeah. 
This, uh, trust me, if you just sit down and try, I, you know, you, you will have success. It just takes a little bit of practice, and you will have good results. This isn't at all difficult to do. You want to carve a dragon? Yeah, that's hard. Or you want to make really pretty Art Nouveau women? That's that's more difficult, but making simple designs like this is totally doable for just about for anybody. This doesn't If I told you how all those Art Nouveau women in really pretty dragons are made, it, it'd be like telling you that Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> you, you'd be like, oh. And there wouldn't be that sense of awe and amazement. Blade screaming in agony. That's like the third blade this week. You gotta just bragging. You gotta me, get on it. I gotta get my skills up. So now we'll just uh, mix it better. Now you've got your piece, and now we're going to bend it. So there's a couple ways of doing it. Um, Is it ring mandrel time? No. It would be helpful. But right here? No, i got these little tiny ring mandrels, but they're like lost. Ooh, I think I know where it's at. You guys can peek in my door. <laughs> Just lots of files. Well, forget it. We'll just do it with a pair of pliers. Round nose pliers. Chain nose. Are there any updates on the saw handles? Um, I don't know. We, they should be done this week. But as Vincent knows, he went over there with me to the, uh, we call it the tomato farm. Because everybody there is pretty much burnt red from muriatic acid. It's hard to know. You know, the plating company is where dreams go to die. <laughs> so there we go. So I just kind of bent it. We have a nice bail. Isn't that cool? Okay. Then with a little tweaking. And here flatten it out a little bit get it to there we go. That looks pretty good what do you think guys let's pop that That's diamond nice. in there let me show you how to do that. Might be a little bit thin metal for that, but I'll do that tomorrow. We'll do one with thicker metal. And then here's your side. And you can see, this didn't take us, how long have we been at this, Vincent? Uh, not too long. Half an hour. Yeah, half an hour. Where's our die? Oh, here's our die. So, for half an hour, this is what it took me half an hour to just whip this up and then I could use this bale for the rest of my life we could make I could make a dozen you could put bunches of them on here mm -hmm. and then you're good to go so it's Friday stone setting day I guess so we will do it I will uh There's a lot of people saying I want to see you flush set a stone okay so you know what I'll do I'm gonna actually make a bezel for flush setting 
I will I will make a bezel using a block of steel so that you can make your own bezels. So imagine this. You take a ball burr and you bore 10 different size holes in this. And then you can take a silver shot, hammer it in to those holes, and it would make you a bezel. That way you can set any, and then you'd solder that bezel onto your, onto your pieces. That would be pretty cool. I think that would be something a lot of you guys could use. And if you had a drill press, oh my God, that you're, you're, you're a full blown tool and die maker at that point. You could literally just drill various sizes of holes to accommodate different sizes of stones. And you're, you're golden at that point, but we'll just do it with just basic tools here at the bench that you would have like a flex shaft or a Dremel. All right. So here's one last look at the cool bale and, uh, you can imagine if you spent more than 30 minutes on it, you could make it look even better. All righty. Cool. Pick up tomorrow? Yep. See you guys tomorrow. Later.